Oh yeah. What up, y'all? It's your boy, the one and only A Switch, aka why my shirt so tight. Silky nipples. <laughs> oh boy. Um, <laughs> AKA the Komaki Tiger Dropper. AKA the Nigga Lil Master. <laughs> Bringing you yet another episode of Switch Your Sights, episode 179. Um, Today's date is August 3rd, 2023. Uh, boy, time is, time is going. I'll tell you that much, man. We are, we, we, summer pretty much almost over. It's crazy, man. All these games coming out. A couple months, we in the, we in like a game in prime time fall, you know? Shouts out to uh, Spider-Man 2, Armor Core 6 coming out later this month. That 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 caught me off guard. I thought I thought um thought Armor Core was coming out like in November or something like that, but no. We like no, we ain't waiting. We ain't waiting. We want you to we want you to suck on this game for as long as you can before the game awards. So best believe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sucking. <laughs> oh, I'm sucking. <laughs> no pause. No pause at all. No, we, we don't pause over here. We we don't do no pausing over here. We playing. We we, we, we hit and play all the time. We don't pause. We don't need to pause. So just let that be known. Let that be uh be established. So a lot of, a lot of stuff popped off, uh, well, since we last spoke. So, uh, you know what? Oh man. Yeah. Pfft. Uh, how could I forget about, uh, you know, the, the, that rich guy that, um, uh, has, has Twitter. Well, what, what is no longer called Twitter now is now called X. <sighs> so yeah, that's man. That's a thing that happened. I, 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 I just don't know where to start with that. So I'm, I'm just not, I'm just gonna let that be. I think that that technically spoke for itself. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, um, without further ado, let's stop the dilly dallying and get right into it. First topic of discussion. Get into that news. Uh, Xbox Game Pass Core uh, is coming uh, September 14th, 2023. Um, so pretty much this is basically going to be a replacement to what we all know, and at least me personally grew up in, to know and love. Xbox Live um, is no longer. It is now Game Pass Core. Um, let me uh, let me let me let me let me let me get the spiel. Uh, from from Microsoft. Today, we're continuing our commitment to give players more choice and value by introducing Xbox Game Pass Core, launching on September fourteenth. Game Pass Core is the evolution of Xbox Live Gold. Game Pass Core will give players access to our advanced multiplayer network, a select collection of 25 games to play with friends around the world, and exclusive member deals, all for $9.99 USD per month 
or fifty nine ninety nine USD per year. So uh, there you have it. Uh, so basically it kind of makes sense, but then like some of the tiering is a little weird uh, when you compare it to the higher tiers of Xbox Game Pass. So at least going by the sheet, maybe things possibly have changed, but going by the, their, their little, little, uh, little, little, little sheet they got, you got core at nine ninety nine a month, which includes online console multiplayer catalog of over 25 quality games on the console, uh, member deals and discounts. That isn't, that is a thing to note too. Um, games with gold is no longer with this new, um, uh, change as well. So no free games, even though technically when you think about it, you get access to a, a catalog of, of games. I'm not, I assume they rotate kind of in the same manner as other, the other tiers of game pass, I guess, but nonetheless. Um, so that's the core. Then you have console, which is like a dollar more ten ninety nine a month, which has hundreds of high quality games on console, new games on day one, which that is not a feature of core that is exclusive to console. And I assume the next one, um, member deals and discounts. Then you have PC, which is a dollar less nine ninety nine a month. Uh, same hundred of quality games on PC, new games on day one, same as console member deals and discounts. And at least exclusively for PC EA play membership is included there. So, and then you have ultimate, which is, uh, pretty much the pristine top of the top cream of the crop. Oh yeah. Um, which is 1699. You get hundreds of quality games on console, PC and cloud. So cloud is apparently only exclusive to ultimate, um, in terms of streaming games to your phone and, uh, things of that nature. I think you can technically still stream games from your console, but you can't just from the general cloud, which would be various miscellaneous servers like, uh, owned by Microsoft or whatever, at least is my interpretation of that new games on day one member deals, discounts and perks online console multiplayer and an EA play membership. So uh, what's weird is the EA play membership is exclusive to PC. If you just want if you really want to get the EA play membership, you can only get it under PC. You can't get it under console, which is odd choice. I guess it's a weird way to force you to go to ultimate. If you, I guess are adamant about EA play membership, but again, I think you can technically get that separately if you really wanted it, but then that kind of defeats the whole purpose in a way. Well, yeah, I, you'd be better off just getting ultimate anyway. So I guess that's kind of their, that seems to be their scheme, I assume, but. I digress. Um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, well, that's good. Regardless of subscription status, any 360 titles redeemed via games with gold in the past will be kept in the player's library. I assume all the other ones, cause I think there's been some like OG Xbox games, um, as well as, uh, Xbox one games. So I assume all of those are included, but I guess we have yet to, uh, find out about that overall. I don't know. I, I kind of like Xbox live, but I guess maybe it's not as, um, yeah, admittedly, um, game Pass has thwarted Xbox live in terms of, I guess, name brand identity and, you know, uh, at least from my, what I've gathered, like, you know, people who are fans of Xbox, you know, game pass is generally the, the big selling point rather than Xbox live, which that kind of used to be the case back in the 360 days, at least, um, from my interpretation and experience. So there you have it. There you have it. Moving on. And also keeping that console news train going. Choo -choo. Um, P3 
PS5 Pro. Yes, the heavily rumored next console, um, the PlayStation. Heavily rumored at this point. Uh, we got a couple new details. I think we may have roughly touched on it a while back. Um, but nonetheless, uh, so it's understood that Trinity has been in development since early 2022 with sources citing that although the rumors of a canceled PlayStation 5 Pro project are always fun to read, Trinity has been the only project in the works for the Pro model. Despite dates being tentative, it's understood that demo events for the PS5 Pro are already ongoing with the majority of studios receiving development kits by late November 2023. Um, Although the Pro specs were difficult to pin down, immediately due to lack of technological prowess, sources have stated that the Trinity, the Trinity, aka the pre PS5 Pro, will will have 30 WGP and 18,000 MTS memory. As for the console's performance targ- targets, and as to be expected, the PlayStation 5 Pro will be targeting improved and consistent FPS at 4k resolution, a new performance mode for 8k resolution and accelerated ray tracing, whether or not a PlayStation 5 pro console is desired enough in the current market remains to be seen. But as of writing PlayStation 5 pro is in development and is targeting a November, 2024 release date. So there you have it. Um, yeah, some of that, some of that proprietary lingo that de- definitely doesn't sound like comp- PC talk seems sounds very proprietary to the PS five, but apparently 30 WGPs would mean 60 compute units for the GPU, uh, versus 36 on the, the current PS five. Um, clock speed is not mentioned performance and all that stuff. Uh, but it seems to be roughly about a, a two times improvement. Um, from the original PS five. Um, yeah. So, you know, now I am a sucker for that personally. Yeah. I'm, I just like to, uh, I just like to play the best of the best. Um, so at least this is definitely speaking to me. Obviously I'm not the, uh, the overall, uh, case for everybody in the market or whatever, but yeah, I, I could see it. I guess the weird angle is them going angling or trying to go for 8k resolution somehow, some way, I guess definitely through a lot of, uh, um, what is it called? ASR FSR and checkerboarding. So I think a lot of that will, will be going on still, especially for 8k. I mean, what to the, to the 0.1% that have AK TVs that hasn't even caught on. Yeah. I doubt it would caught catch on via during, well, at least throughout the course of the, the life of the PlayStation five, um, which at least projected presumably until 2027. So interesting in that respect. Um, but if anything, it'll definitely hopefully improve the 4k resolution where maybe we can actually hit 120 F plus, uh, yeah, if we can hopefully hit 120 FPS in games more consistently. Now for, I know there's some games that support it, but obviously it's not as much, um, you know, uh, I mean, if anything, for backwards compatible PS4 games and stuff like that. But otherwise, yeah, it, that's at least what I'm more looking forward to rather than eight K or whatever. Um, accelerated ray tracing and stuff, but being able to play some of the, uh, you know, current PS5 games at even maybe better fidelity, uh, slash, um, frame rates. I mean, I'm all for it. So, um, I believe it. I definitely believe this. This definitely seems pretty likely. Um, 
Yeah, consider how crazy they 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 are selling uh the 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 P- base PS fives as is. Um, I mean, <laughs> they're probably gonna get people who already bought some a fair amount of people who already bought PS fives to actually buy a uh, PS five pro as well. So, I mean, I think if anything, it's, it's worth a shot considering, you know, doing them doing the same thing with the PS five pro. I think it just gets weird and muddy when it comes to at least for the developers. Cause I know how that is more, more so of a pain than anything, you know, trying to develop for different tiers of consoles, kind of pretty much how, they're doing the series S and the X, uh, for Xbox where they, you know, have to consider the series X or S when development for the series X. So then you kind of feel like games aren't fully, um, I don't know, optimized for the console, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. Shouts out to PlayStation's reference to the matrix. You got Morpheus, I think, it, which is the PSVR. Uh, N- was Neo the? I want to say it was Neo the PS the four prototype. Sony Neo. Uh, Could have swore they referenced uh, Neo at some point. Maybe it was. PS3? I don't know. Matrix references nonetheless. So there you go. There you go. Still. Still. Keeping this Nintendo train going. Choo choo. Console train news. Next console news going choo choo. Uh, Nintendo's next console, um, has been, uh, supposedly, um, with key partner studios as in the development kits for, uh, Nintendo's next console, um, which in with the launch planned for next year. Uh, according to video game Chronicle. So, um, interesting details, uh, in that respect. Um, let's get some of the cliff notes. According to multiple people with knowledge of Nintendo's next gen console plans, the company is likely to release new hardware during the second half of 2024 to ensure that it has ample stock available on day one and to avoid the kind of shortages seen with the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. To George, to George, two sources uh, VGC spoke to suggested that the console could launch with an LCD screen instead of the more premium OLED, which is on the current, the new Nintendo Switch, um, which is basically the new Nintendo model with the OLED screen. Um, in order to bring down costs, especially considering the increased storage needed for higher fidelity games, the current switch comes with just 32 gigabytes of internal memory. While many current gen PlayStation and Xbox games are over hundred gigabytes. Like its predecessor, the new Nintendo console will also accept physical games via cartridge slot. The sources said other details such as backwards compatibility support for switch games, physical and digital remains unclear. Nintendo has said it wants to convert as many of Switch's 100 million plus user base as possible to its next system. Although some third party publishers are said to have expressed concern that legacy support for Switch games could negatively affect sales of next gen titles. So, hmm. This all kind of is pretty seems to be pretty likely, uh, for sure. I guess the biggest concern for sure, at least off of what we got here is that, uh, the backwards compatibility. Yeah, I think that's going to be, um, I don't know for some people, myself included with like, you know, 
a huge Nintendo Switch library of games. Um, I think that'd be a pretty, pretty, um, negative point for this next switch console. If it does not have backwards compatibility, um, but at least for sure, it definitely has support. It does at least take, uh, cartridges. So. I mean, that definitely at least increases the likelihood of uh, backwards compatibility, you know, having the same um, interface, presumably of, you know, consuming the media. So I don't know. I think they would have to definitely have be backwards compatible also to encourage, you know, um, to definitely encourage people, owners of the previous switch to get this one as well. I just feel like they definitely have to have backwards compatibility. I don't know. Nintendo can go either way. It feels like, cause like, let's, let's see with the, the, the Wii U, it it was backwards compatible. It can at least play Wii games, but nothing else, which is fair. And then of course the, the original Wii could play, uh, GameCube games. Um, and that was it, but you know, obviously, um, at least having the backwards compatibility, compatibility of its previous generation, which I think obviously it'd be great if they could do more, but they kind of already are trying to, I don't know, meet those demands by, you know, doing this Nintendo online, uh, stuff, uh, in terms of like, you know, letting you be able to play 64, um, N64 games and, and, and the like. So yeah, I think that we'll definitely at least, especially considering how popular the switch is, I think it's a, I think it's very likely where we'll, we'll get backwards compatibility for this, the, this new Nintendo console. Hopefully it will be called the Nintendo's super Nintendo switch. That'd be great. Come on, super switch. It just, it just go rolls off the tongue so greatly. Nintendo super switch. Um, yeah, I know we speculated what it could be, but, um, yeah. Um, interesting in terms of higher fidelity games, uh, in terms of more storage needed. Um, so that's going to be interesting. So at least is definitely at least gotta be 4k. Um, yeah, at least Nintendo needs to get out of the, 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 the stone age with all this 1080 p stuff. Let's, 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 let's time to kick in that 4k. It's time. Nintendo is time. Um, yeah, LCD screen. That is a, that's definitely a, um, setback, but I don't know if, if this is going to be a hybrid console, like I feel it's more than likely going to be, they would Nintendo be, would be very dumb to not, continue with that, the, the hybrid format that is, you know, established for all these years to just do something completely different. That would be very odd. I mean, that's why I think a lot of people do like the switch. The fact that you are able to play it portably or, um, not, um, can play it as a dedicated home console or strictly portable. It's up to you. You have the choice. You can play it either way. So yeah, I don't think, yeah, it's definitely going to be a hybrid. I'm for sure. I'm certain it's definitely going to be a continue the, the hybrid, uh, tradition, if you will, maybe give you more options. I don't know. Um, Oh, that'd be dope. Maybe you could somehow maybe do both technically like, Maybe they could, I think I've heard rumors about that as well, where they are potentially trying to, uh, maybe add another screen, um, in terms of maybe somehow, some way you can play both, like play it, like, like look at the screen and then play on the TV as well. Maybe in some, some way that'd be dope. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, next year, um, when next year, that is, uh, 
That is the question. Um, 2024. I don't know if they would try to compete with PS5 if that's the, the, those rumors, you know, are true. I would feel they will want to do their own thing and probably go around the same, uh, same manner of like drop it in April, March in that around that time. Um, I could see that. I mean, they're Nintendo. They could definitely pull that off if anyone could like they did with the, with the, the switch. So who knows? I am. I'm looking forward to it. Nonetheless, please be called super Nintendo switch. Just that, that is, I will, I will go to the marketing department and yell at everybody. I will do it. I will do it. If it's, if it, if it doesn't come out, if it doesn't come to be, I'm yelling at everybody. I'm going to Nintendo. I'm like what the, what the hell, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all could have the opportunity. <laughs> but I digress. Moving on. Uh, like a dragon guide in the man who erased his name. Um, unfortunately has, uh, confirmed to be digital only in the West. Um, as a, as a, a hardcore, uh, maybe hardcore is a little too, a little too crazy. Um, as a very enthusiastic, I'll say that a very enthusiastic fan of y- Yakuza series, AKA like a dragon now. Um, this is, this sucks. Just, just flat out. This sucks. I mean, first it was, uh, Alan Wake. I, I'm pretty sure we talked about Alan Wake two only going digital. Um, now, um, you got, got go Toku going to only digital with this. I think maybe because it, this is more kind of like a side, like game technically, and maybe that's why they justified it, but nonetheless, well, also is the fact that you, it is coming out physically in, um, Asia. So it's like, well, what the hell? So might have to, might have to hit up, hit up my play Asia people to, uh, you know, get, get, get that ball rolling. Hopefully if the game is multi, uh, multi language, but if, if not worst case, I would, would still want to get it at some point, but, um, Damn. Damn. Oh, well, Hey, at least I can play it, you know, come November 9th, 2023. And, uh, then in there I can, uh, unleash the dragon guy, guy, the, the man, the man who raised his name. <laughs> uh, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Look so forward to it. Yeah. Uh, keeping the Japan news train going. Choo 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 choo. Oh, let's see. Oh my God, I'm messing it up. I'm messing it up. These time codes can't beat my ass. Final Fantasy 14 uh, is coming to Xbox. That is, that's crazy. I never thought I'd say that, but here we are. Uh, I believe this was during um, uh, a Final Fantasy. It was like some dedicated event. Some like special, I think Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy focused event. Maybe it was a concert. Yeah, I think it was called Final Fantasy Fan Fest or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Final Fantasy 14 coming to Xbox. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 is, is only going to get bigger and better. So I hope Xbox players give it a try. Uh, Kiryu as CEO of Square Enix, not to be confused with, uh, Kiryu Kazama, uh, from Yakuza fame, uh, (laughs) 
had to have had a big shout out state. We want to continue to deliver fabulous games to fans across the globe. We want to welcome the Xbox community as well, starting with today's announcement and whenever possible, we are planning to bring out our games for to Xbox for players to enjoy. Uh, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, uh, said uh, as well, we look forward to building one on building on the relationship that brought Final Fantasy 14 Xbox and partnering with Square Enix on future games. Uh, and uh, during the event, uh, of course, the solidified picture uh, shows, um, I think, Yoshi P. Uh, uh, Kiryu, the CEO of Square Enix, as well as Phil Spencer doing the, the triple handshake. Everybody's hands touching all together. Everybody's smiling. It's like this is this is a poignant partnership that will further define <coughs> Xbox going forward, I guess, kind of thing. Um, if anything, it definitely d- does at least indicate, um, you know, more Final Fantasy games coming to Xbox. I mean, technically, we've gotten like uh, some of the old ones, Final Fantasy seven, eight and nine, I believe. I think technically 10, maybe not 10 yet. Um, but then, you know, recently, I think the latest was crisis core, I want to say, which is a surprise considering that, um, technically it's related to not somewhat related to seven remake, but seven remake has yet to come to Xbox. So, um, and who knows how long that exclusivity deal, I think they, uh, you know, had with PlayStation behind closed doors. Um, I don't think it's fully explicitly stated how long that holds, but, uh, it seems to be a significant amount of time, if anything. Uh, but who knows, maybe it's up maybe by, maybe by, Hmm. No, because I guess considering that it's a trilogy or plan to be a trilogy, maybe until, until, until the whole trilogy comes out, then technically, uh, the exclusivity wanes off and then the, it could come to Xbox. At least my, my theory, I don't think nobody knows the answer fully. Actually, I me, mean, I'm curious. Um, how long is final fantasy seven remake? Remake, if I can spell, exclusive to PlayStation. Uh, Square Enix has confirmed that Final Fantasy VII Remake Winter Gate will be exclusive to PlayStation for at least six months. So that, and that came out in 2021. Did it? Damn. Really? You sure it wasn't 2022? Exclusive to PS5 and skipping PS4. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so they at least the PS4 exclusivity and so presumably PlayStation exclusivity, I assume from that. So F7 remake was released April 10, 2020 and such time exclusivity exclusivity will end April 10, 2021. So it seems to be 2021 for sure was the cutoff in terms of that. So who knows? Maybe, uh, huh? But then there's this article. Integrate won't appear anywhere else for six months, anywhere else for six months. So yeah, definitely by now, I believe technically it could in theory come to Xbox. I don't know. Maybe they would, no, they would definitely want to Xbox definitely will want that, you know, this on their platform and for this to happen. So maybe they're working out some cool, crazy announcement that like, you know, 
oh hey yeah also um rebirth is no i think maybe they had some exclusivity plan with rebirth as well so who knows at this point it seems to be kind of up in the air that i think technically they can but they just haven't um so i mean there's that i guess moving on So, um, what, how dare I, damn it, I missed, I missed an article that I was talking about, damn it, one second. Why? Can do this on the fly. Let's give myself some options. Give me some options. Just give me some options. Okay. So, uh, PlayStation five beta rolled out, um, earlier on Monday, this Monday, this week, um, has a pretty good amount of, um, changes, features, added features, um, go through a couple, uh, as somebody who also did get the beta and I am, I've been messing with it as well. I can speak to some of them also. Uh, first is, is probably one of the biggest, in my opinion, uh, notably, uh, for the, for those who have it, but, um, support for compatible Dolby Atmos enabled audio devices. So 3d audio powered by the Tempest 3d audio tech can now be enjoyed by those who own compatible Dolby Atmos enabled HDMI devices, such as soundbars, TVs, or home theater systems. Uh, Tempest 3D Audio Tech specifically renders to the Dolby Atmos audio devices in use, including overhead channels, allowing for even greater levels of immersion in the audio scapes of PS5 games. So pretty dope. So basically, it technically puts the um, Tempest 3D Audio Tech, whatever PS5 exclusive t- lingo, and puts it in the Dolby Atmos container to basically pretty much seamlessly transfer a lot of the audio properties to Atmos, which is, uh, as somebody who's not put it to its full paces, it, it is sounding pretty fire. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Um, some cool social, uh, feature enhancements, uh, party UI update. Um, Ease of use features. Um, <laughs> I forgot one of the biggest uh, controversial, uh, well, inter- overall interesting additions to this uh, this beta, at least, is uh, being able to mute the 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 beloved, renowned even uh, PS5 beep sound that you hear like when the when you start up the console, you know, deep, you know that uh. <laughs> jealous, bitter, bitter girlfriends, the bane of their, <laughs> the bane of their existence. Um, that apparently you can actually mute it. Now you can also adjust the, um, adjust the, the, the volume. So you can have it not sound as loud or sound very low or mute it completely, which I don't know who you are. I don't know who, who, wh- what person you are out there, but, uh, keep that beep on. Come on now, it's it's iconic at this point. You just gotta you just keep the beat. You know, <laughs> I need to make a shirt. <laughs> keep, keep the beat. The <laughs> keep the beat. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Keep the beat. Keep the beat. So, um, but yeah, 
pretty cool. Very interesting. Uh, I was playing with a little bit, like when you're adjusting the audio of the beep, you can actually, it'll all, it'll also play it while you're, um, trying to decide, which is a very, very interesting, but cool. It's a nice little option for people who are, who are, aren't right in the head that wants to turn that beep sound off. You're just, you probably kill people. If you keep that beep sound off, I'm just, you, I, I don't make the rules. That's, that's just, that's just what I believe. So, you know, I digress. <laughs> um, also, uh, support for larger, even larger capacity M.2 SSDs. So the max limit used to be four terabytes. Now uh, it's, that's been increased to eight terabytes. So if you got that, if you just got that money laying around and you just a storage hoarder, boy, you about to, you about to have a field day. You about to have a field day, man, fill that boy up while you can. Um, so that's dope. Eight terabytes. Wow. I'm like, who, 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 who fills that up? I want to know. I just want to meet the person who, who can, who can, who can max that out. Current. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess maybe if you play just a lot of PS five games, I know they tend to be very big in, 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 you know, size, I guess, but still, man. Um, another notable feature, at least that stood out for me, at least is, um, cool feature you can, uh, play with and add well with the, with the beta is that, uh, it's a pretty dope, um, uh, essentially you can use the, uh, dual sense vibration when navigating through the, the menu on the PS five, which is pretty dope. So it, 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 it gives off a kind of, uh, blue keyboard, blue mechanical keyboard vibe as somebody who likes, um, I don't know, just feedback when it comes to navigating to feel like I'm just to feel like I'm living, you know, feel like I'm living on edge. I just want to want shit to vibrate when I move it, you know? Oh, I guess that could, <laughs> that could be interpreted. Oh man. That could be, that's an interpretation potentially. Uh, Hey, I mean, you just got, you want to vibrate when it move. You want, you got to move when it, I'm not, I can't, I can't dig myself out of that. I'm just saying, you know, if it vibrates, you should move. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Nonetheless, uh, overall, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, awesome features coming down the pipeline for, uh, the overall public. Um, and I'm here for it best believe I'm, I'm here for it. I'm all for it. You know, uh, you, I'm, <laughs> now I'm motivated. <laughs> oh man. That is never going, that's never going to get old for me. It is not, it's not. Oh man. Uh, moving on. Masahiro Sakurai, you know him. We all know him. The the the, the Godfather of, of 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 Smash, one of the greatest uh, gaming franchises of all time. Um, on his uh YouTube channel that he's been pretty much doing pretty much since he left or ended development for uh Super Smash uh Smash Brothers Ultimate, um, where pretty much he goes in depth on like the development side of games and. Uh, pretty much covering a lot of interesting aspects of, of the games in terms of like audio cues, um, uh, displaying damage, uh, hit, hit detection and stuff like that. It's very insightful. Even as somebody who's, who's, who, who's a video game enthusiast. Um, it, it's very, it's very cool to see, um, kind of his perspective on, you know, when it comes to developing games and what makes games great and things like that. So I do recommend this channel. It's pretty dope. Um, but during one of his, uh, his episodes, he did go into detail about, uh, work on, um, well, more so the potential of a smash sequel. Um, so according to Sakurai Nintendo, 
would have the option to move ahead with Smash 6 by separating the series from its creator, but the developer has doubts that it will work out. Uh, so he says, for now at least, I can't really imagine a Super Smash Brothers title without me, he remarked. I mean, not mine, I don't think. Uh, so Sakurai went on to explain how how the series doesn't really have someone who can lead the way uh, how he had, but acknowledged that Smash is too big of a title for Nintendo and a new game is inevit- inevitable. Um, and quote from his video, Smash Brothers is a massive important title for Nintendo, so it's fair to assume there will be another one at some point, but it's going to take some work to figure out exactly how to make that happen, he said. Um, which is also cool. Yeah. He talked about kind of like how smash came to be, uh, at the time, uh, in terms of the initial phases of it, like of him being approached at E3, um, after everything was said and done in the hotel with, uh, with, um, Satoru, the late Satoru Iwata at the time. So, yeah. So that's at least, you know, good to know, kind of add a little bit of, you know, at least, yeah, Smash is not ending, um, but yeah, it's a, it brings up a lot of questions for sure at this point, because it's like, well, one, considering like this Smash Brothers Ultimate, because literally that everyone was, was there, everyone was there. So how can everyone, can everyone come back? I don't, you know, um, so that would definitely be the obvious uh, downside it, you know, of the, of the next smash, presumably they're not going to maintain the, to bring the whole, that whole roster back. Maybe they could, you know, do a go to DLC route, I guess. But I think that is, uh, yeah, over 80 damn characters in smash holes. I just forgot about the significance of that, but over 80 characters and being able to bring those back, especially, you know, the pain and the ass it was to, for at least the mainly the Square Enix Final Fantasy and hell fucking uh Sora from from uh, Kingdom Hearts was a huge pain in the ass. So just thinking if they'd be able to do that on top of what Konami with a uh, Solid Snake and I don't know. I I I would like to see how that looks, but that's obviously the biggest like hurdle. If anything, I mean, I think it's probably a given that they probably won't be able to get that whole 80, 80 man roster back, but could be wrong. Maybe how, you know, maybe they could do some ultimate, uh, I don't why well, no, Cause I feel like they would definitely when it comes to the net code, which is not great for, a on for the smash ultimate that they would have to, yeah, they would have to, you know, revise the game if anything. So no less, it is good to know that. Yeah. Masahiro Sakurai at least will, it, at least it implies that he would be involved if, uh, there is another smash technically. So, Hey, I'm all for it. Hey, he smash, I smash, you know, you know what I mean? You, you know, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. With that being said, that concludes uh, the news for this episode. Let's uh, get into what I've been uh, playing. Which has been uh, Final Fantasy 16. Uh, finally. 70, what, 73 hours? <laughs> oh my God. 73 hours later, I have finally completed Final Fantasy 16. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, man, that was an experience for sure. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember what I did talk about previously regarding the game, but I'll try to be at least mindful of that. But nonetheless, um, yeah, so finished it. Um, <laughs> pretty much did most of everything, did all the side quests, which is probably the biggest 
um, downside of Final Fantasy 16, in my opinion, is that, yeah, the side quests were very, very much, very samey, very much, uh, talk to, talk to, uh, person, get the brief on the thing, go to travel to, uh, the res- whatever town, uh, to fight this monster and then talk to the guy and then get, get your quest, get your quest complete. And, you know, of course there is some quests that deviate a little from that, but mostly it was just talk to this guy, give you a overlong brief of doing this, this thing to justify me doing the thing. And then I do the thing and then I get, get my monies and my, my little renown points and that's it. So, eh, yeah, I, at some, at, uh, towards the end, I, I definitely stopped. Um, I, st- I just started skipping through the dialogue. I just started skipping through the dialogue and, uh, just, you know, I was like, I was, <laughs> I was basically just reading it rather than listening to it. I'm like, all right, uh, this is, this is growing very long in the tooth. Um, and you know, I could have stopped playing them. I could have stopped playing the, the sub but I'm like, I'm already, I'm already this far in. I mean, I can't, I'm not, I can't just quit now. So then I, I just, I just stuck it out and just went through all of them. And, and, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's probably the biggest negative, uh, I definitely have towards the game. Um, story wise, it just, it's some weird choices in terms of just them kind of wanting to go game of Thrones, but not just going all the way in, I guess. I don't know. It feels like they were being, um, how would I say it? They were treading lightly, treading lightly when it came to, um, being very much like game of Thrones. And it's very apparent they were inspired by game of Thrones, (sighs) but yeah, it just, um, yeah, it just, it, it wasn't sure where to stand its ground. It felt like a lot in a good majority of the story. I'd say it's probably the biggest sentiment I have in regards to the story. But I mean, you know, uh, outside of that, the, f- the, the fidelity was great. The cutscenes were even great. It feels like the cutscenes were like straight up 4k, uh, UHD DVD, uh, movies. Um, you know, when they would be playing, I'm like, damn, this is, this is revolutionary. This, I'm like, you, de- <laughs> you definitely can't do this on a PS4, man, that boy, <laughs> that thing would be screaming for life. My God. But, um, yeah, combat did grow me a little bit more. Um, did unlock some, some, uh, additional icons, which that definitely helped a lot. Um, that is probably my other gripe. I feel like the icons were too spaced out. I feel like the icons, I feel like they needed to give them to you a little bit faster. I think that would have potentially helped alleviate some of the pacing issues as well. Like that come from mainly the side quests as well as sometimes the main, main story. But yeah, I feel like they were being too stingy with, uh, not with, uh, giving you the icons. I I think they should have gave you, uh, a lot of your icons much sooner than they did. Um, you know, but yeah, other than that, it was a, it was a great experience. I glad I, I'm glad I did experience it. This is technically my second final fantasy game that I've completed. Um, that, <laughs> that isn't related to final fantasy seven. So that is, a uh, at least notable. I've, I've not played any other Final Fantasy. Like I maybe started a little bit, I think of six at one time, but I've not fully committed to a uh, a mainline Final Fantasy game since Final Fantasy seven. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was a feels fine and definitely it, it. I think it'll barely make my top ten of the year, um, especially considering all the competition. Good God, I don't know. It, yeah, especially considering the competition, it might get knocked out to be honest, not gonna lie to you. Um, but you know, it was a, it was a cool experience overall. Glad I, I, I got to be a part of the zeitgeist, you know? Um, I mean, I was, of course I was enjoying, enjoying the combat and stuff too. So 
I guess that was the other factor. The fact that it is not a turn-based game. It is, you know, pretty much an action game. Um, but yeah, no. Final Fantasy 16. I would definitely wait for it to go on sale. I wouldn't. I would uh, not pay full price, personally, in terms of after, you know, <laughs> after paying full price, essentially. But uh, yeah. Moving on. Oh boy. Also, after finishing FF16, I went right to Double Dragon Gaiden. Man, let let boy let me let me gush about this game real quick. Man, I maybe played about what felt like what 10 12 hours um so far. Um man, where do I even start? So, pretty much the plot pretty much similar and you know, the, the bad people being bad, you got to stop them. This time Marion doesn't get punched in the stomach. She's she's with the crew. And she got she got a handgun. She got a rocket launcher. She ready. She ready to f- people up. She really is. She she bought that life. Um, but yeah. So at least the 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 proposed starting cast is uh, of course Billy and Jimmy. They seem to be very differently revised compared to like you know the the older counterparts. Like um, uh, I always mix them up. Uh, I think Jimmy is. Jimmy is hair is black. Uh, when it used to be brown, uh, J- Billy is. I think Billy was always blonde though, technically. Yeah. So, which kind of makes sense to kind of make them more, separate them more in terms of like just overall, like visuals, visual aesthetic, which I get. So, that's that that's fine. Um, then you got. What's his name? Uncle, uncle, uh, damn it. Uncle, uncle shield. (laughs) I'm gonna call him him uncle shield. I forgot his name. Let me, let me, let me look it up. What was it? Uncle Sanjo something. Um, let me look it up. Let me look it up. What is this? It's uncle something, uncle Martin, uncle Martin. So yeah, he's uh basically this, <laughs> this big black dude with a, with a, um, I guess he must've did some service in the military and he got this big ass like riot shield. And he basically, um, he's pretty much a grappler so he can grab people and also like do a special attack with his shield to be knocking people, knocking people clean out. Um, so yeah, you uh pretty much got those as the main cast, but then you also unlock additional characters like Abobo, the infamous Abobo, um, who is also great. I was playing with him last night. He is dope as hell, very fun. Um, but yeah, in terms of the general gameplay, um, you know, pretty much tries to stick to, you know, the previous games in a way. But I think the biggest uh, I'd say I'd argue like most revolutionary aspect they add to this game is like, at least for single player, I'm not sure how I haven't played the multiplayer, but I assume maybe it could be still in, I don't know, but basically there's a tag system, at least for single player where, um, pretty much you play as one character, but you can tag your, uh, you basically pick two characters at the start and then you know, one is your secondary character who you can tag in. Uh, but you know, when you tag the character in, you can, you essentially swap them out. So it's kind of a weird, like beat them up with a, with a Marvel versus Capcom vibe to it, which I'm very much, that is very much up my alley. Um, that very much works also cause, uh, you can do kind of in the same uh, vein as Marvel versus Capcom, you can implement, uh, your tag partner in combos as well. So like you're doing a combo, finishing it and then, uh, tag them in and they, then they can end it. And, and a lot of cool, crazy stuff that I feel like I've still have to discover with, uh, you know, also the synergies between the other characters 
because at least I started out with Billy and Jimmy, but um, I, I was starting to experiment with like, huh, what is a, uh, how is Marion and uh, Uncle Matten looking like? Um, which, you know, I don't know. It, it could probably work. Maybe just some, some things I need to figure out, but it definitely seems like if you get a, a Billy or Jimmy and use, uh, uncle Matt or, uh, Mir- Miriam to, uh, you know, um, mix it up a bit and pff, don't even get me started on the secret characters, which I've yet to unlock all of them or, or any of them yet. Cause I'm trying to get a, it's a trophy you get if you hold a hundred coins. So I'm waiting for that. But, um, but yeah, no, the combat is really good. Very satisfying, surprisingly satisfying. It didn't feel too in depth, but then after playing and experimenting with it, it definitely has a lot of depth to it. If you look hard enough, um, in terms of, uh, especially utilizing the tag mechanic, uh, for it. So very much digging that also really cool, dope thing that, uh, at least I've not seen lately, but definitely has been done in the past. And some games I can't remember is, um, they're, they use, um, this, how would I, how would I describe it? It's, uh, it's like a progressive, progressive optional Mega Man esque type approach where, um, for those who've not, you know, play Mega Man, Mega Man, most Mega Man games, I think if not all, you can select which stage you want to go to with no, uh, um, linearity force linearity at least. So you can go to one stage or a different stage or this stage, but each playthrough you can do it different, which I guess the intent is to add a little bit more, um, replayability, but at least with double dragon Gaiden, how they make it even more interesting is that after you beat, uh, one stage, for example, uh, when you go to the next stage, they add to the stage essentially. So, um, basically in one stage, if you, you play it, you only get to, because it's the first stage, you only play one section of it. But if you play that same stage in another playthrough on like the third level, instead of the first, it adds more stages to that particular level basically. And it basically adds repay replayability because, um, you don't see the the other phases of the, of the stage until you play Um, you play it on like the fourth stage, third or fourth stage is really when you get a lot of pretty much almost all of the, uh, stage, um, stages that you haven't seen. If you played that particular stage, uh, on the first or second, uh, level, if that makes sense, I'm maybe making it sound more complicated than it is, but basically it, um, expands on the, the four stages um, depending on, uh, when you choose to play it. So you can play uh, against this dude. Uh, I think his name is Anubis. If you play him on the first stage, you only play one section of it and you fight him right away. But if you, um, don't p- pick that stage and pick the other ones and then save his stage for the last, then you get way more, uh, phases of that stage, which is pretty dope. So, love that very much. I think it, it works very well. Um, it, it adds a lot of cool replayability aspects to it, which I, uh, very much, very, very much dig, um, to the greatest extent for sure. So, um, yeah, I don't know about, uh, cool store aspects. You can get like, um, with the coins you get, you, uh, you know, purchase, songs and of course characters, which are the most expensive and things like that, which is dope. Um, it is hard (laughs) as hell, but you can, um, adjust the difficulty, but you, you know, um, won't get rewarded as much, which is fair. Um, but then, you know, eventually you can work your way up to like the harder difficulties and get, you know, more of a risk reward thing, uh, to it. But man, boy, I'm not, not to spoil anything, but boy, the, like the, especially the last stage, man, that, that gets very difficult. Um, love all the references to the older games. Of course, you know, uh, especially the music is very dope as, as a, as a fan 
of Double Dragon growing up myself. Um, l- loved and appreciated all of them. Um, yeah, overall, it is very, very awesome beat em up. This beat em up resurges, man. I am here for it. I am very much here for it. Please bring up all the beat em ups, bring every single beat em up back. I would very much appreciate it. Just keep, keep bringing beat em ups. Just, just give me, just give me, just give me the beat em ups. I mean, that's fine. But I mean, obviously, you want to bring other people in to the beat em ups. But I just personally, I would love just bring everyone back, bring them all back, remake them, remaster them, do whatever, <laughs> do whatever you need, do whatever you need. Just keep bringing them. Um, but I, I love, love to see it. Love to see these games. Uh, I think it's been reviewed pretty well as well. So that is, that is lovely to hear, especially as, you know, somebody hoping for the, the beat em up resurgence, which it, which it be honest, it kind of feels like we got, Let's see. We got this. We had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder Revenge. Technically, the Kyle Bunga collection remastered or, you know, come back. Um, Streets Rage 4, of course. We had Final Vendetta that came out, um, I think, uh, last year. Um, we eating. All right. We eating right now. Midnight Fight Express. I've not even played that. I need to get to that. But beat em up fans are eating very much eating very much. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it very much. I, I appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. Um, other than that, it's pretty much all I've been playing or really. Um, so let's get into what I've been watching, which has been, um, secret evasion boy. <laughs> <sighs> I don't even want to get into most, most of it, man. This was a very disappointing to say the least. I'll say that first and foremost. Um, it definitely has some cool aspects to it. Of course, you know, Samuel Jackson was definitely the star of the show in terms of who redeemed a lot of the negative aspects of this show. Um, it was a lot of cool interactions with him and, uh, some, some cool stuff to kind of ponder and, you know, suck on a little bit, but, uh, yeah, it is definitely some to, to not get spoiler, even though a part of me wants to spoil because it's not worth watching, but I don't want to do that either way. But, uh, yeah, it is, uh, yeah, especially toward the finale, the finale, especially so many problems, uh, so many problems. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if this was, um, I think this was well written and, and fully fled, fledged out before, um, anything popped off. Um, I know there's a lot of reshoots and restructuring of some, some, some things, man, does this show? Cause yeah, it's, it's, it feels like they, they could have took, they could have taken their time with a lot of aspects of the story and stuff. You know, this is supposed to be like a a, 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 a very much a national threat, um, but d- it definitely felt very small considering the scale or the proposed the proposed scale of of this uh this this series. It was just not as not that great, not that big, you know. So it is what it is, man. Very disappointing. At least how, of course, how this was hyped up to be, especially like, oh, is he a scroll? Is he a scroll? Who was a scroll all along? How long were they a scroll? And it's like they don't even they act. They they present more questions than answers. And that's always not a good thing when it comes to especially Marvel stuff. But it's sad. It's sad. It's sad to just just witness. It really is. Nonetheless, there you go. Secret Evasion. You, if you really big Marvel fan, eh, even then, that's it's kind of hard to recommend. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, then uh, caught um, Adam Eve, which I guess they, I think during Comic Con a couple weeks back, they just, just dropped this uh like special in. in a special related to the invincible universe 
uh, which is, you know, stars one of the characters that you encounter in Invisible Adam Eve basically just shows her story um, growing up and how she came to be uh, also touches a bit on the, you know, origins of um, uh, acts as a prequel and um, it sheds some lights on a couple aspects, but it's mainly mostly about Adam Eve specifically. So cool little appetizer uh, before we get season two. I guess it feels so long. I think I thought there was more seasons in the spacing out of the seasons uh, or the spacing out of one where they played. I think it was a section of episodes and then they waited and then it was this is it was still season one type type deal. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I believe it's season two is projected to come out this November, which is I'm very much, very much looking forward to. So. Highly recommended. Uh, she was going in, man. It was some definitely some cool aspects, uh, cool fight scene. That was, uh, yeah, boy. I recommend. I recommend. Um. Also, while I was on the uh, Amazon Prime tip, um. I heard about this show. I was like, you know what? Let me, let me see what this show is about. It's called uh, jury duty. It is. um, So the premise basically just off the bat is pretty much. There's this one guy who I guess, uh, yeah, I won't spoil how it happened, but essentially it's this one guy who, who thought he was, he's, you know, up for jury duty essentially. So basically he's like, okay, just doing jury duty. Um, but the thing he doesn't know is that pretty much all of the other jurors, uh, that he basically eventually ends up, you know, being included with are all actors, including the judge and pretty much everybody around him, um, are actors. So he doesn't know this mind you. Um, and Basically, it's a very interesting show to just see, like, of course, obviously, since everybody's actors, a lot of weird shit pops off and uh, ensues. And he's it's very funny just seeing his reaction to it. And, you know, obviously they're 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 angling it as like a documentary of being a juror, um, essentially. And then that's kind of how they're getting away with a lot of it. Um, But then there's yeah a lot of moments where it's like, okay this can't be real. And like. Um, is he going to catch on or whatever? But basically, yeah, that that's pretty much the premise to not, uh, even go into any more detail than that. Um, jury duty. It was a very dope, um, overall show. I really like they did. I don't think they'd be able to do it again, considering probably some of the notoriety it's gotten now, but it was a very awesome idea that, uh, I'm surprised nobody has done sooner, but yeah, jury duty on uh, Amazon, Amazon uh, prime. Pretty dope. Pretty dope. Also saw a uh, resident evil death Island. Um, this is, uh, the highly anticipated next Resident Evil CG movie after the very disappointing, uh, what was it? Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, which was like a five episode Netflix show <sighs> that was, was disappointing. And boy, does this, does this still stick with that tradition? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically the premise is, um, there's this new virus, of course, cause Resident Evil, um, on this Island that, uh, you know, um, all of the (laughs) coincidentally, the whole main line characters have heard about and like, are you know, finding out about and like, and then come to conclusion. Yeah. You know what? Let's all, let's go there. Um, not all collectively necessarily, but each one eventually somehow, you know, makes their way there essentially. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah. I mean, it checks off the, I, I will say it checks all all the boxes in terms of what you technically will want from Resident Evil movie, especially probably the biggest 
you know, uh, attraction is a lot of um, mainline Resident Evil characters actually interacting with each other on screen for the first time. Like uh, we, we saw Leon and Chris interact in Resident Evil 6 with that interesting, you know, initial uh, kerfuffle. But then you got who else? You got um, Jill Valentine interacting with Leon, Leon S. Kennedy, which technically has not been seen on screen. You got, of course, Claire interacting with um, Jill. So I guess Jill being the common and common denominator, not really being involved in the, the, the previous movies at all. And of course, Rebecca Chambers, you know, interacting with the characters also. Um, so, I mean, that's really the biggest like selling point to the movie, which they obviously pretty much told it very well. But outside of that, ugh, I don't know. It just, I'm trying to like put my finger on what the, the gripe I do have with it is. It's just that, I don't know. It's like, it, it definitely comes off pretty B movie is B movie ish with Chris. I mean, uh, Leon with his, you know, corny one liners and stuff and dialogue. So I mean, like a lot of the characters are on brand. Um, you got Jill. She's like been shook up from, you know, all the re- recent events and stuff like that. And, you know, she's kind of going like <laughs> kind of being like, uh, what is the term they use back in the, the classic, uh, nineties, uh, cop movies. Um, you, 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 you off the hinges, Jill, you off the hinges. Of, I know it's, it's some other term that's not coming to my mind, but yeah, loose, you loose cannon, Jill, you loose cannon. Like she's basically just being reckless and putting herself in, in, in a uh, imminent danger because I guess she just doesn't care anymore kind of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they touch on that a little bit and then, you know, her and Chris have, you know, some turmoil when it comes to that also. Um, yeah, Ugh, I don't know, man, I guess it's just, I don't know, maybe like, and then I try to think about it. Like, what if this was a, a, a video game and like, this was just all like video game based, like what I feel the same way. And I don't know. I think maybe it's just the, the dissonance between like, doing this in a video game versus the movie maybe is why it just doesn't feel well. But then there are some other aspects to the movies too. Like, of course there, there comes a moment when all of the characters, well, a good amount of the characters are somehow debilitated. I'm like, really? I don't know. It just, ah, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was, it was okay for sure. Okay. It's just, um, you know, it just didn't live up to the hype essentially. And, you know, of course, as a Resident Evil fan, just being hyped to no end, um, for this, especially, Oh shit, Leon and Leon and Jill are, are interacting with each other. Oh, they're, they're, they're shooting rockets together. Oh, that's so cool. Oh yeah. Okay. Death Island. I'm on. Yeah. I will say the animation and, and all that stuff is pretty dope too. That, that actually looked pretty good. Um, yeah, it's if you're a Resident Evil fan, I think you'll get a kick out of it, but uh, I think it's hard to recommend otherwise. I mean, cause I mean, I think that's the main reason most people are watching this being fans of Resident Evil. So it, it'd be hard to recommend otherwise, you know? So, <sighs> but that's that Resident Evil Death Island. There you go. Last but not least, definitely not least. Uh, also out of nowhere, um, the first slam dunk, um, I, uh, I didn't know. I I guess apparently this came out in Japan in 2022, I want to say. And then I don't think it technically officially came out to the U S until like last week, like, uh, I think July 28th was when this hit in theaters. And even then in theaters, very limited, small viewings. Um, it's, it seemed to be just playing before all the big movies are playing, which is, which is kind of sad in a way. Um, because man, 
Well, the slam dunk should get more love, but uh, yeah, so the first slam dunk. So at least the premise, it seems to take place pretty much around the same timeline as the original slam dunk. Um, cause it, it seems to kind of, uh, touch on some of the story aspects of the, the anime, the original anime, um, but in like kind of a truncated form, it doesn't touch all aspects like, you know, with Mitsui and, um, uh, Ryoto, I think the, uh, the pot, the, um, the shooting guard and, um, that he's, I guess that's also the, the, another interesting aspect of this movie is that it isn't from the main character perspective of Saku, 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 Sakurai, Sakurichi. Let me, let me, let me fact that shit. Let me, let me fact that before I look, look dumb. It's just not coming to me. The, 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 just the, it's not coming to me. It is, uh, Sakuragi. Part of me said, I thought it was Sakuragi, but I wasn't sure. Nonetheless, yeah, Sakura, Sakuragi, who is the main character of the anime, the mainline anime, but, um, at least in, for the movie, it, uh, R- Ryota Miyagi is the main, uh, character technically of this, um, which is a very interesting angle. And, you know, you see a lot of his backstory, which boy, not to spoil, but man, it definitely hit home. It very much, it got me in the feels. I cried probably like <laughs> maybe four times in this movie. Um, cause man, it res it resonated with me personally so much. Um, you know, specifically with loss and dealing with loss and like, uh, the pressure of being, having a step up and are you going to be able to step up? And a lot of those themes definitely hit home. Um, when it came to that, but, uh, other than that, like this is, this has some of the best, like 2d pseudo 2d 3d animation I've ever seen. Um, cause you know, at least from a lot of the other previous animes, sort of berserk and stuff like that would put a very bad taste in my mouth, um, in my mouth. But this definitely is the best, like, I don't know what they call it, but like a pseudo 2d 3d um, anime, you know, aesthetic that it, it does very well, especially you think, you know, with basketball and stuff. Um, obviously this is very much inspired by like nineties back basketball. Like when, uh, Michael Jordan was in his prime, you can definitely tell all of the, the, you know, um, uh, inspiration of this, uh, series came from. But yeah, this is very good. It, it the, the the movie takes the course of like one single game. I guess is the best the best uh team um in in Japan uh they're they're up against and like will they actually overcome and beat these guys? Who knows? You have to watch to find out. But yeah, I I like the format. Like, you know, they it would basically show the course of the game, but then in between certain points, it would go back to, uh, Ryota's story. Um, and you know, kind of go, um, uh, uh, add certain aspects and then also touch on some of the stuff that was touched in the main anime, but like in a truncated form to kind of, in a way, catch up to speed. It's kind of like a, I think it does a good job of, of maintaining that balance to not like over explain you kind of some of these characters, but obviously if you've watched the anime, you, you're fully familiar with all these characters and like, you know, their tendencies and it's a lot of dope references to, <laughs> to, uh, various, you know, um, gat running gags from the, from the show as well, which I really thoroughly uh, enjoyed. So man, very good. Very good. Um, it's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's, it's very sad that this is not getting a, like a fully, fledged, uh, you know, I don't know, notoriety, um, for the movie it is, but, um, it's crazy. I didn't even know, didn't even know this came out. I think I was watching on, uh, what I think Wooly Wooly versus, uh, uh, YouTube. He was talking about, it. I'm like, huh, what about that slam first slam dunk? 
why would they be talking about that now? And I'm like, look it up. <laughs> I look it up and I see like there's fucking screenings for it. Uh, literally like a day after it dropped last week. And I'm like, well, I have to go now. I have to go watch it immediately, uh, which I did. So that was that was a very random random off the cuff experience, but I'm glad, I'm glad I did come across it in that way. So, um, man, shouts out to Takahiko in no way. I believe he writ wrote the original, um, manga and whatnot as well. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Resonated with me so much. Um, man, it was, it was very good. Um, probably the only thing I, (laughs) if anything I could criticize, very nitpicky at this point anyway, but really would have liked some of the classic music from the anime, um, that, uh, you know, that's just a personal, uh, very much nitpicky gripe, but it would, I think there were some brief references, but outside of that, nothing very, um, I don't know, distinct, I guess, um, you know, but, ah, <sighs> I cannot recommend this movie enough. I mean, even if you aren't a fan of basketball as I am, I'm not really a fan of basketball. I mean, I like, I like seeing like, you know, short clips here and there, but on my own accord, I don't generally watch basketball, but this just, yeah, this is, I think this, if anything might make you make you like basketball, um, maybe just a little bit more, but yeah, man, slam dunk. You, if you, if you've not watched it, it's, 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 it's pretty dope. It is pretty dope. I am a fan. I am a fan. Ugh, it's very good, man. I, I kind of might want to watch it again. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I think that will do it for episode 179 of switches sites. Um, if you did like the show, feel free to like, rate, and subscribe on your various podcasts and platforms. Uh, you can also catch me record this live on Twitch TV slash a switch. Also watch the archives on youtube.com slash a switch, or is it at a switch? No, I don't know. Nonetheless, um, a, hey, uh, evil, evil weekend. Um, good luck to everybody out there. Um, use a deodorant, use that damn deodorant. Okay. I'm just saying <laughs> Unless, uh, yeah, other than that, um, till next time y'all, uh, get your damn game on. Feel free to fuck. Oh yeah. Nobody's safe.